This morning we are on the road at one of Rhode Island's best family attractions, Roger Williams Park Zoo, one of my favorite. We're going to get an inside look at life for the animals and even meet some of them. So let's head out live now to Michaela. Good morning, Michaela. Good morning, Audrey. Well, we're here live at Roger Williams Park Zoo where they are home to so many different animals and boy, do they have quite the appetite. So we're getting you up close and personal with a few of the zoo's most popular residents. Just like humans, animals need proper nutrition. And at Roger Williams Park Zoo, feeding time is a great way for zookeepers and animals to interact. I am one of the uh, giraffe keepers here at Roger Williams Park Zoo. Um, a lot of my day consists of uh, cleaning and feeding the animals here. The giraffes are the zoo's tallest animals, so they must have a pretty hearty appetite. They eat um, two different things that consist of their main diet, alfalfa hay, which is the most big part of their diet, which ends up being about two or three bales of that a day. Um, each bale is about 35 pounds. And then the other part of their diet is a green. It's called Missouri herbivore green. Um, they each get different amounts. Uh, Sukari, who is our heaviest, gets 10 and a half pounds a day. The next one is Amber, who uh, gets seven and a half pounds. And then Jaffa Prince, who is only one year old, gets one and a half pounds. The keepers provide them with hay and grains. But throughout the day, these giraffes can snack on greens that surround their habitat. Really don't have to worry about keeping the trees trimmed back um, because the giraffes do that naturally for us. With some pointers from the staff, it was time to give feeding a try. Yay! Oh, it didn't like the taste of that. <laughs> he did not. Come up to a stranger was pretty, was pretty, pretty impressive right there. You didn't like this? Hang on tight because these animals are hungry and not to mention strong. Throughout the day, you may see them actually reaching up, stretching up their necks and stretching out their tongue, which is 18 inches long. Um, it's also a prehensile tongue, which helps grab the leaves. And not only can you see these giraffes this weekend, we can also take part in a great event that's happening. So Andrea Roland is here to explain all about Zoo Artisy. What is it? Zoo Artisy is a fantastic event happening here tonight at the zoo. The first one in the first of three nights is this evening. It's an odyssey through the zoo. You get to go on a magical journey encountering 20 living art statues by 1031 Productions. All of the zoo animals will be out at the sunset hours and you also have some really cool refreshments, champagne and chocolate covered strawberries as well as having live music will end the evening. So it's a great event for kids, families and also a great date night also if you're looking for something to do on a Friday night. It starts this evening. Tickets are only $15 and $10 for children and there's also great member prices and all of that information can be at rwpzoo.org. All right, excellent. And you said tickets can be purchased at, at the, the door. door. They're still available? Absolutely. All, all ticket sales are at the door. Okay, excellent. And now, if you want to check out some other cool animals, Laura Personius is here with us, not with Sonic the Hedgehog, but with another furry friend. Who is this? Um, this is Spike. He's one of our East African hedgehogs. Um, they're primarily found along East Africa and Southern Africa. Um, he's kind of waking up. These guys are primarily nocturnal, so he's uh, moving around quite a bit right now. Yeah, he seems a little bit antsy. It's probably the heat and everything, too. It's getting to us all. Don't worry. Yes, <laughs> yes. Um, but he's doing pretty good. You can see his face. His um, best um, kind of things for him to do when he's searching around is his sense of smell. You can see his cute little nose. His eyesight's pretty good, but they usually use their hearing and their sense of smell to kind of get around. Um, he might also be trying to burrow, which is another thing that they do um, in their habitat. They try and... Uh, <laughs> try to find a little area and kind of just hang out there most of their lives. They're primarily solitary too. He seems to be kind of burying around there. Yes. So what are some of the things that hedgehogs eat? Um, they're primarily insectivores. Um, here at the zoo they get a, a special insectivore diet. Out in the wild they'll do the same smaller um, worms and smaller, actual smaller snakes and sometimes lizards as well. Um, one of the funnest thing about hedgehogs is they are very resistant, 40 times more resistant than a guinea pig of the same size to um, special types of venoms and toxins. Wow. So that's another great way that he makes it around um, on the African savanna where he lives is with all those other snakes is he's really resistant to that. So he can handle the heat? He can handle the heat, definitely. 
absolutely. Okay. Um, his other big thing is very similar to Sonic, though he doesn't roll. He can <laughs> um, tighten up into a very tight ball. And there's a special type of muscle that's right under these spines, which most adult hedgehogs have about 5,000 of them. Wow. Um, and so there's a very tight muscle. I won't give you the fancy name for it, but he can, <laughs> remember. He can tighten up, tuck his head in, tuck his feet in, tuck his belly in, and you cannot unroll him unless he wants to be unrolled. All right. Very interesting. So many great things to see. We're going to be taking you up close and personal with how animals have a little bit of fun later on in the show. So back over to you.